Hi, this is Isaac Schaefer, and this is my first video presentation for Math 431. Today we're going to work on problem 4.3, where we're asked to derive the heat equation given that the thermal conductivity depends on x. We're generally going to stick with the entire structure of how the derivation was done in lesson 4 with just some small modifications. So, with that in mind, the system itself remains unchanged. We're dealing with a cylindrical region bounded between x, and x plus delta x, and we're only concerned with how the flux is flowing at the boundaries. So, most of the assumptions remain unchanged. However, the fifth assumption is, of course, that we're dealing with the conductivity varying with x. So now we're going to apply Fourier's law to the system. Now, the only real change here is that since the conductivity depends on x, is that instead of having a constant k, now we have a function of k. And, of course, we need to make sure that the conductivity is applied at the point where we're, we're looking at the flux. So, of course, we have k of x uh, at times u sub x at x. And similarly, we have k of x plus delta x times u sub x at x plus delta x. And given that assumption 2 says that the lateral boundaries are insulated, that means that the flux across the boundaries has to also be 0. The conservation of heat principle is going to be applied. Now, the only real change here is that the net flux is going to have to account for the, the varying conductivity value. All right. So now we're going to start by modifying equation 4.2. Now, the left-hand side remains on the same. We're going to integrate, or excuse me, we're going to take the time derivative of the total energy within the region and then set it equal to the flux across the boundaries plus whatever the internal heat source is adding into it. Now we're going to apply the mean value theorem. Now we'll divide both sides by this constant. You notice that now the flux terms have turned into a difference quotient. So as we take the limit as delta x goes to 0, we have three things happen. First, the constant c1 and c2 are on an interval between x and x plus delta x. Since delta x is now going to zero, we're going to have to assume that that interval is now just x. So that means that c1 and c2 both equal x. The difference quotient has turned into a derivative of the product of two functions, k and u sub x. That means we get to apply the derivative product rule. Then we're going to simplify that expression using the differential operator. And now we're done. So you can see here that the units are identical for both sides of the equation. That is, both sides have units of degrees Celsius over seconds. All right, and that's it.